This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Spitbon Podcast. We here at the Sloopcast are thrilled to finally be taking talking about some baseball with our new sponsors, the Spitballin Podcast. We know that we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage in the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming and you have now found your new MLB pod. Take a listen to the Spitballin Podcast by your very own Sloopcast Austin and his buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans, but there will also be unbiased MLB coverage from someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who's brand new to the game. That is Spitballin Podcast, no G at the end, which is available at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, many other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, to answer your question, Esquire, uh, enough for it to be said. So more than two. And that's publicly. That's publicly. Imagine what's happening behind the scenes. <laughs> oh, God, gangland. I could totally see it, too. Why haven't you texted some... me back? We got some. Uh, some How's the spring... kombucha? We got some spring game um, discussion here, Jared. So let's let's go ahead and jump into the episode. Yeah, let's do that before I get myself in more trouble. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, you know, I, I saw Ohio State play football on Saturday, so still riding off that high. Uh, got some vitamin D this weekend. Got some things done this weekend, even if it wasn't all the things I wanted to get done this weekend. Uh, but you, you got know, some things done. I got some things done. I always underestimate how long it's going to take to do things. So, but here we are. Isn't that just, isn't that just what life is sometimes? Um, mm -hmm. I never did mow the grass. I needed to mow the grass. And now it's dark outside and you can't mow the grass once it's dark outside. That's just me trying to reignite a fight in the Discord server. So everyone just ignore everything I'm saying unless you're already on the inside of that joke. And if you're not on the inside of that joke, consider joining our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. That is discord.thesloopcast.com. And my chair is my chair is deflating again. Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> now, now, I'm, now I'm way too low. You should probably fix it already. Yeah, the 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 good people here uh, sent me the replacement. It would take like thirty. I know. Listen, I already told you I got a lot of stuff done this weekend, so I won't take your shame about one of the things I get didn't get done this weekend. All right. One of the things I did get done this weekend was watch Ohio State play football. Kyle, we're gonna break this up into two episodes because that's what we do here. We're gonna talk about. It's always been longer than three weeks, Gangland. Um, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to talk about the Ohio State spring game. We're going to talk strictly about the offense and Kyle, guess what we're going to do? We're going to take this as an opportunity to, um, reassess our depth chart, blah, 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 blah. Try that our, again. Reassess here. our depth chart projection. Now, if you think for one second, I'm going to edit any of that out. You're wrong. Kyle, but you talk for a second that, while I fix my chair. Sure. But before we do that, uh, we got two booms. We have two Easter Day booms that happen. Uh, we have three-star wide receiver Bryson Rogers out of uh, Florida. And we also have four-star defensive back Dijon Johnson out of uh, Florida as well. So two Florida um, prospects committing on the same day to the scarlet and gray. Yeah. And I, I'm really excited about both of these guys. You might look at the recruiting numbers. Um, ne neither, of, neither of these guys are ranked super high. Don't worry about it. I'm just telling you right now, don't worry about it. 
And if you need any proof of that, stick around for the defensive episode, which will be out uh, Tuesday. I'll there. tell you why not to worry about that on Tuesday. Okay, Kyle. Uh, let's let's get into let's get into the offense. Let's get into uh, maybe just some thoughts. Maybe and then we'll maybe do a yeah. depth chart so, projection. So- so, so you were you were at the you were at the horseshoe. No, I wasn't. Um, no, I thought you went to the horseshoe. No, no, I didn't. Okay. I don't know where Never you mind. got that idea. <laughs> I thought you would have went there, because you know you live in Columbus. But uh, well, you know what? There's a whole story behind it. But for the sake of not uh, humiliating any of our sloop cats, I won't get into it. <laughs> uh, all right, offense. Yeah, so. A little mix here of the of the spring game here, as many of you have already watched, is mix of two hand tackling and real tackling here. Kind of mixed it between first team, second team, and third team here. But but overall, Jared, which what would you think of the offense from what you saw? Ah, uh, you know, it's it was pretty basic. Um, we didn't see. We didn't see uh, Henderson get tackled. We didn't see um, JSN get tackled. Uh, we we didn't. We obviously saw none of the quarterbacks get tackled. As far as like the guys who we are anticipating being like the starters and being the key contributors, uh, we just didn't see a lot from them. They ran very basic version of the offense, and that's about it. Like. And that's fine. It's it's what it's what you want to see. Like you don't want to give anything away. Um, there, well, you know, that's exactly what Ryan, that's Stroud exactly what looks Ryan good. Did. JSN looks good. Henderson looks good. Stop the freaking presses, right? Yeah, I mean, Ryan Day even said, but both defense and offensively, it was he he said that it was very basic. I believe is what he said. Um, on both sides of the ball. So and and that's what we saw. We didn't see any anything too complex, but it was enough to get some new faces out there, get some people who haven't been on the field in a while, get their get their adrenaline going. Good to see some players who've been hurt, like like Potter and Proctor and others, get on the field there just to see them, see get them on the field and see how they played. Yeah. Um- Couple couple of things we have down here in the live chat. Gangland saying uh McCord looked much improved. Uh Buckeye Zach saying McCord looked like a starter in the making. Yeah, we we definitely saw McCord take a definite step forward. Again, like he's coming into his second year. That's a big deal. It's a big deal coming into your second year, which is exactly what he did. Um, he's taken steps forward and that's absolutely fantastic because should anything happen to Stroud and like you want Stroud in there, right? He's the one with the experience. He's the starter, but it's big boy football and anything can happen to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And I already felt fine that, that McCord could step in and be a championship level quarterback if needed. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I feel so much. You saw so nothing much in the spring the, game to make you feel any worse about that, if not a little bit better. Yeah, I feel so much better about this uh, this quarterback group than I did last year when it was like C.J. Stroud, and if he went down, like oh boy, ho- hopefully he yeah. doesn't. But but this year, especially what we've seen early on here, yeah, McCord looks so comfortable in the pocket there. Really liked his poise. Um, made good decisions. Accuracy is right on point. Made some great throws. Really liked what I seen. And and even even true freshman uh, Devin Brown, man, has a rocket of an arm from what I saw. And and is probably the most mobile of the three. From what I, we've seen. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. Stroud Stroud's mobile. He just doesn't like to doesn't like to act it. Kyle, we have a Sean Brawley sighting down there in the live chat. Um, the Devin Brown, I thought showed flashes, which is what you want. Like, right. That's what you want. He's, uh, a green, green shirt, I believe is the technical term for a spring enrollee. 
Um, so you have a green shirt in there. He's barely been on campus. He has 15 Ohio State practices under his belt. I, to expect anything fantastic from him would be a mistake. But we saw flashes, which is that's yes. that's what you want out of a out of a guy with 15 practices under his belt. That's exactly what you want is to see uh, some flashes. And that's what mm-hmm. we got. Uh, he had one rollout uh, to the right side that he dropped in. Per- the, the wide receiver didn't make a catch. Doesn't matter. The ball was placed perfectly. He did it on the run. He found his window. It was a beautiful pass. It's exactly what you want to see. Hi, mm-hmm. Austin. Yeah. I, yeah. I. Yeah, I was really, really happy. I, I don't know about the quarterbacks. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much on the quarterbacks here, but yeah, very, very happy from what I've seen from those three so far. Uh, Brawley says he was at the game. Most impressive to me was Royer, Xavier Johnson, and Pryor. He also gives some mm-hmm. defensive but, but, names, but we're sticking to the offense this episode. Um, and well, so, spe- speaking of yeah, speaking of Pryor, I want to move on to the running backs because absolutely. man. Man, I love what I'm seeing with our two two backup um, running backs, Williams and Pryor. I don't see Williams, backups. I see starters in waiting. Yes. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. I Williams is just he he will he's one of those guys that he will not go down on that first contact. It's going to take multiple players to take him down between the tackles. Really, really like what I see in Williams, and then Pryor out in space. Yeah, fantastic. He's he's not going to be he's not going to be like like Paris Campbell elite from what I've seen so far. But but man, I I think I think he has that potential to be very special. Put him out into the flat. You mean Curtis Samuel? Yes, Curtis Samuel. Thank you. Okay, I was trying um, to piece together what the heck you meant there. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> um. But yeah, I, I really like Ooh. to see him like in a shot in a shotgun formation, and then you throw it out into space there and just make him make a play. I really like what I've seen from Pryor too. Gangland says Pryor reminds me of Zeke. I'm gonna ask you to slow down a tad on that one. Um, I, I think Kyle's, I think Kyle's um, comparison of Curtis Samuel, I think I like a little bit more. Um. Austin, I've never not been a Pryor fan. Yeah, I still I like don't. Pryor. I but I still don't see where the ball is is gonna is gonna come to him. I I, I just don't. I mean, I want to see him returning kickoffs and or punts. Just it, it is snapped to him <laughs> and handed to him. I I get that, but Ohio State's never used a third running back. To a great extent, not Mm-mm. I don't want to say never, but not in probably, the urban probably, day probably, era. No, I was going to say probably, probably one of the last years of Trussell when they had uh, Boom and um, Boom well, Heron and a couple of others too. They they used about three running backs that year. Well, and let, let's just be honest, and you you and I really liked Boom Heron, if for no other reason the fact that we lived next door to him. Uh, but they used three running backs <laughs> that year because they didn't have one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's they have not in the Urban Day era used three running backs. Uh, that's just a fact. They they haven't. Um, y'all going overboard. This is a spring game. There are people going overboard about certain things. I will acknowledge that. Um, I, but I, I think prior prior was one of the best running backs in the country in his recruiting class. Yeah. I think he was like, this the, is the number two, the number two overall all purpose back number two, all purpose class. back. I believe. Yeah. In, in, in this class, um, uh, he has, it, th- this shouldn't be a surprise and this doesn't feel like an overreaction, if anything, he was just underutilized last year. But again, I have to wonder how utilized can he be this year? You have all of these wide receivers who want the ball. You have three running backs want the ball. There's only so many balls to go around. There's um, only so many snaps in a game. Yeah. 
and that that that's not me discounting Pryor's abilities because I'm not doing that. I've never Austin done that. I just don't know where the ball is coming from. I don't know if you give him the ball, it's taking the ball away from Henderson, away from Marvin Harrison Jr., away from JSN. You think <laughs> if you think he's bad, no, I think he's I think he's great. Um exactly exactly if, what, and if um, i'm if i'm mayan williams i'm very concerned that he's going to start stealing carries from me exactly if, like what buckeye, buckeye zach said we have three elite running backs yeah absolutely and again if i'm mayan williams i ha i have one eye over my shoulder i'm sleeping with one eye open because mm -hmm. i think all three of these running backs are absolute starters they're yeah. all absolute championship team caliber starters. And that's good because there are only three scholarship guys currently on the roster. <laughs> There's help coming in the fall. Speaking but of, um, they're the only three. They're only three uh, scholarship guys on the team uh, as of this exact mm -hmm. moment. Speaking of elite, the wide receiver group here, Jared, other than JSN doing JSN things. Yeah, that that just says. What 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 else did you uh, see from this weekend? Uh, uh, Brawley already said it, uh, but absolutely should probably be restated. That Xavier Johnson had a really good game. If you don't know who that is, he's a walk on. Um, mm -hmm. he's a senior walk on from Cincinnati, but he he had a real nice flash a couple times. Uh, if I'm being super duper honest with you guys. Yeah, he was a three high star, uh, a high three star. Like he could have gone elsewhere. He could have had a scholarship somewhere else. Um, that that absolutely deserves to be said. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. That being said, uh, it was just, um, it's a uh, it was it was a spring game as far as the wide receivers went. Um, the tight ends got a whole lot of love, and I mean a yeah, but, whole lot yeah. of love. Um, yeah, before, before Xavier Johnson looked better than Ballard. Ballard didn't have a good game. I've heard lots of great things about him coming out of the uh, coming through the spring and out of the spring. Um, and, you know, we have to be careful. There are 15 practices. We saw one of them. So we always mm -hmm. have to yeah. be very careful to not overreact here. Well, a couple of things. Um, uh, you talked about Ballard maybe not having the greatest game, but don't want to talk about defense, but there's a reason why he didn't um, look all that great. And it's because of a particular defensive back. We'll cover the next episode though, but uh, Brawley other... Fleming was not healthy. No. Yeah. Fleming. Yeah. Fleming was not, they're still keeping him out out of, out of precaution, which is, which is a bummer, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I really like what I've seen from Abuka and Marvin Harrison Jr. Is, we already know how, how great they are, but in this, in this scrimmage, this practice, uh, you can see how great their um, route running has been. So some of their ability to, to create separation from the route running was in full display here. As well as I, really, I didn't see a ton I, of separation from the wide receivers this game. And, well, and I say that, the, and I well, say that the, as the, sort the, of the a first like quarter and a half. I, First quarter and a half, it it was, but I thought I thought the defense kind of settled in towards the second half of of the weekend, though. But I tell you what, I really like what I'm seeing from uh, from Grace. Uh, I know I know that he's um, only a f incoming freshman here, but I really like what I'm seeing so far from uh, from Grace. Yeah, uh, I mean, all all the wide receivers are great. I almost feel like it's a waste of time to. Get in the detail about how great the wide receivers are. We know it. Um, we know it. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let, I guess move on to the tight ends then, Jared. But maybe uh, we should uh, hear from our sponsor first. Sure. I guess I guess that's that's my call here then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> uh, this episode of the Swiftcast uh, is brought to you by the Spitball on Podcast. Um, they are a podcast talking about baseball um 
sorry, I'm scrolling up here. <laughs> we know we give you some of the best football and basketball coverage around the world for Ohio State, but baseball is booming, and you have now found your new MLB uh, podcast. Take a listen to Spitballing Podcast by our very own Silcast Austin. It is Buddy Reed, who is a lifetime baseball fan. Just like here, there will be some shenanigans. There will also be unbiased MLB coverage for someone who has grown up around the game as well as someone who is brand new to the game. That is Spitballin Podcast. No G, just Spitballin, you can, which is available over at Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other podcast streaming platforms. Yeah, hi that's, there, uh, Jared. You can uh, hi. Say, say hi to Austin, who's down in our chat right now. Uh, host of the Spitballin Podcast. Hi, Austin. All right, tight ends here. I know this is this is probably one of the most talked about positions here, especially with Ruckert leaving. Who's going to fill in uh, Ruckert's shoes there? And there's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to talk about here. Yeah, us and everyone else on the Ohio State uh, blogosphere. Is that a word people still use? I don't think so. Um, are getting a lot of mileage talking out of the talking about the tight ends. Um, I think all of the tight ends, all of the ones we've been talking about, yeah, only old people like us, exactly. Um, Cade Stover started because we, you know, we haven't said it, but I feel like anyone who's listening to this probably already knows it. Ohio State basically did number one offense versus number one defense. And then basically the next drive, it was the number two offense versus the number two defense for the most part. Um, Kate Stover started and he was also of the uh, prominent tight ends. The only one not to catch a pass, but he did start. Uh, G Scott, on the other hand, was uh, rolling. I believe Kyle, at least last I looked at the stats, uh, I think he led the team in receptions. Um, Royer looks like a grown ass man. You're talking about someone taking that second year leap. Joe Royer looks like that guy. Um, so I, you, you, you look at, I think those three, then you have Mitch Rossi, who's almost more of a fullback than he is a tight end. Um, so you got G Scott, you got Joe Royer, got Cade Stover. Cade Stover looks like a straight up blocker. G Scott looks like a straight up wide receiver. And Joe Royer looks like maybe the guy who is both maybe not as good as either, but is maybe the guy who is the mixture. He's the balance. Mm -hmm. You have your receiving yeah. tight end, your blocking tight end and your balance tight end to use like Man. Madden look, terminology. Look at, look at, yeah. Look, looking at G Scott jr. Just that, that is a big target. And I, I forgot really how big G Scott really, really was just seeing him out, out there on the field. That's a big target to throw to. And like, like you said, uh, I really liked what I've seen from Joe Royer too. Had some great catches, had that, um, I think it was the second touchdown in the afternoon. Great hands, uh, really liked what, uh, what I saw from him. Yeah. Um, and that's a, and then a lot, uh, and then a lot of, a lot of talk about, uh, about, I believe he's a walk on, maybe you can correct me or, or not, Jared, um, Reese Stocksdale. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I do believe he is a walk on. Was it a lot? I mean, I know he had the touchdown catch and congrats. Uh, it's a spring game and I'm glad you had your moment. Um, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of really talented guys. Uh, I think Stocksdale is actually a wide receiver. He looked like a tight end, but I think technically at least listen, according to the official Ohio state roster, he's a wide receiver. Just tossing that out there. Um, but yeah, he got that touchdown. Um, there were uh, Ohio State. The generally, it looks like they were uh, pretty willing and pretty happy to sit a bunch of their guys early. Uh, I don't think, like I said, uh, Henderson got sat. Uh, Henderson wasn't out there for. There were like two drives where live tackling did not take place. I think it was two drives, and Henderson played those two drives, and that was it. Same for JSN, same for a lot of guys, offense and defense. Ohio State seemed very willing to park their studs very early in the spring game, and I'm I'm cool with that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, no team has two linebackers that can keep up with both, right? Here, Here's the thing. 
Remember, if you have two tight ends out there, see, you, you guys are like, let's put two running backs out there and let's put two tight ends out there. And okay, now, now you have one w wide receiver. <laughs> like, now you have one wide receiver on the field. How many wide receivers are on this roster? 78, exactly. So, I mean, you're like, let's put two tight ends out there. Let's put two running backs out there. Okay, but you're taking wide receivers off the field. And that's the deepest spot on the entire offense is the wide receiver spot. G is another wide receiver. Basically, like he's, you know, we, we keep talking about the defense and how they have the jack position, which is a hybrid linebacker and defensive end. And then the, the bullet position or whatever we're calling it, the bandit or whatever, which is a hybrid safety line. Hey, if, if the defense can have all these hybrids, why, why not G Scott is a hybrid wide receiver tight end. I mean, Mitch Rossi is a hybrid. Is. And Mitch I mean, Rossi is a hybrid is. fullback tight end, right? Honestly, just, yeah. Just throw Dwan in the backfield. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> against it. Reserve one of those eighty of, numbers for Dwan. Just yeah. you know, some tackle eligibles. It'll be fine. Well, speaking of Dwan, thought on the offensive lineman, Jared. Uh, I mean, we we saw what we were supposed to see. Um, I I think that again, like we saw our true starting five. Not a lot. Um. And I thought that they looked good. Um, you know, one of the things you see people sort of talking about, I, I, I think uh, we saw a couple bad plays from Paris Johnson. I'm not worried about it. Um, one where he got caught holding, I believe it was Sawyer. He had another um, false start. Um, we saw the backup offensive lineman get torched. But is, is anyone surprised by that? We know Ohio State has offensive line depth issues especially on the outside, especially in the tackles. Well, well, in, in the and we know the defensive line is insanely deep. Yeah. And, and historically too, well, especially in the past number of years, the spring game has always been more of a way to kind of plug in, plug in a different players to see, see how things flow, see how players fit within the offensive line too. So I, it's really hard to judge how the offensive linemen did, but I thought they were okay. They were, they, like you said, Jared, sometimes there were some plays that they just looked bad and other times like, Hey, yeah, they, they, they held their own there. Uh, Brawley says at times the D line didn't look uh, great. I don't, I don't think that's, I thought the defensive line looked good. Um, I, I think from what, I think from what I saw in the defense, they weren't line, allowed again, to blitz any. Yeah. Um, Again, a, a lot of it was it's basic offense, basic defense, and yeah, couldn't yeah they didn't really do any kind of like blitzing or anything like that. Blitzing, too. stunting. But, 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 but the thing with the defensive line, I know, don't want to talk too much about the defense. We'll save that for the next episode. But the defense really did a good job of plugging the holes, not not creating a lot of open space that we've seen over and over again last year. Yeah, uh, Brawley said they got pushed back uh, on the two drives uh, pretty hard with Mayan when Mayan was in. Now, I, again, they weren't doing any stunts. They were not allowed to blitz because, like, well, they could run blitz. Okay, but then they'd have to know they were running. Like, I'm insanely basic defense, um, not worried about it. Um, yeah. The defensive line is, I think, a real point of of depth in this in this team but i don't want to get too lost in talking about the defense right now because we're talking about the offense um the oh yeah we, we know the ohio state offensive line has depth issues and i i still feel good about the starting five uh matt jones was was in there as the starting guard i expect that to be the case ohio state i think has some answers as far as their interior offensive linemen uh, I think Jacob James looked good. Anak Vamahi looks good. Neither of these things, I, I think, were huge surprise. Um, and the outside, or excuse me, the offensive tackles uh, did not look good. Now, they did not look good, um, one, because they're mostly young. They're very, very young. 
their depth issues at the offensive tackle. And also they were going against JTT and Sawyer and guys who had their ears pinned back going for spring game glory. Um, yeah. It's honestly just like not a huge, not a huge shock that the, we, we all know the defensive line is way, way deeper than the offensive line, especially when we're talking about offensive tackles versus defensive ends. It's just not fair. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's really just not fair. Um, yep. Yeah. Anything else, Jared, before I go into some questions from our sloop cats here? Uh, I think that's it for the offense. Make sure to come back uh, tomorrow for the defense. Yeah. And let's, let's get some questions in. All right. Uh, let's see. So Kabuto, which player's impressive spring game performance will be the most irrelevant come to the start of the season? I got one for the defense. We named a side, couple. Was... I don't want to disrespect any of the walk-ons, but the walk-ons. We a couple walk-ons had a good had good games, but mm-hmm. they're in difficult spots with as far as just getting on the field because of the depth in front of them. Yep. I'm really glad they uh, had so... good spring games. Sun card uh, ask, what's your favorite overreaction so far? Um, uh, I think people there, there are certain juniors, uh, whether they be redshirt or true that people are trying to push off of the team or at least push, push out of the starting lineup. Um, I, and I think that a lot of that is overreactions. Uh, I think mm-hmm. a lot of people have given up on Fleming don't give up on Fleming. A lot of people have given up on Zach Harrison. Don't give up on Zach Harrison. Like there are some juniors or some third year guys on this team who people are really, really willing to give up on. Um, and I'm just encouraging you not to do that based off of a spring game, especially like, again, Julian Fleming was hurt. Didn't get the play. Zach Harrison was in there hardly at all. And and when he was, he was going against the first string offensive line. And again, they weren't blitzing and they weren't doing stunts. And so like, yep. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I think Zach Harrison's going to have a remarkable year this year. I think Julian Fleming's going to have a very good year this year. Yep. Uh, Kabuto asks, how awesome was Stroud's new helmet? I, I, I love the new look helmet. Uh, they apparently can see better. It's apparently safer. Um, it looks futuristic as hell. It almost looks more like a motorcycle helmet than it does a, a football helmet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really like it too. Uh, Austin asked why, why is Evan Pryor the most underrated player on the team? Because of the guys in front of him. And I think Austin even said, I wasn't allowed to say that in the question. Is that right, Kyle? <laughs> yes. Yes. But I'm sorry, that's just the truth. Um, it, he's underrated because for all the reasons I said earlier in the show, I he's yep. insanely talented. It's just it's going to be hard to get him touches. That that's it. That that that's it. That's the entire thing. He's incredibly talented. It's just going to be really hard to to get him some touches this year. Unless someone gets uh, hurt, and someone probably will, it's big boy football. The one of those two running backs is going to miss some time. Um, they'll probably get him more involved with maybe special teams or in the passing game, maybe third down situations. They'll they'll try, and, but as of right now, from what we've seen, it's 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 just looking at trends. He is currently the third running back on the depth chart. Ohio State doesn't use the third running back on the depth chart. Those are two facts. Those are two yep. trends that we can observe that we it's and again, like maybe things are different this year for whatever reason. And maybe he's not the second running back come October yep. through injury or th- otherwise. And maybe things change, but that's just where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stewart asks, is this, is this finally truly the year of the tight end? No, never always. Yes. But also never no. In our Um, hearts, it is always the year of the tight end. 
in practice, how long ago, how long ago did, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's ne it never. All right. Never. And then we hit, we do have a few, few more questions here from Odin. Uh, Odin asks, can, can one actually learn anything from a spring game? Yes. Um, absolutely. You, you can see like who got snaps. Uh, and again, I don't want to get too far into the defense. Defense is the next episode. I, I'd like the discipline that defense played with, and I liked some of the ball skills we saw from some of the defensive backs. And again, if you want to hear more about that, tune into the, to the, to the uh, next episode. So yeah, you absolutely can. You just can't overreact to it. You need to understand that it's just one of 15, one of 15 practices. Yeah, save that, save that one there, Brawley. I'll mention that part on, on the defense here. Uh, Odin also asks, are we now officially in the wasteland? No, we still got the draft. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. I think, I think those are all the, the main questions here, Jared. Uh, there are some other shenanigan questions, but I think for spring game wise, those are all the questions. Okay. Maybe we'll use them next episode. Okay. All right. Um, hey, anyone down there in the chat have any uh, music recommendations while I do the other plugs? Um, so, uh, yeah, I can come join our Discord server. We were chatting during the game. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we we're chatting after the game. You know, what we see and how we feel and everything else. Um, if you're if you're looking, if you're like, oh, man, Twitter used to be fun, but now it's a cesspool of toxicity. Um, come join our Discord server. We are cons we are your less toxic alternative. That that's it to to your message boards to Twitter. We are your less toxic uh, social media, but not, but sort of. Uh, come join our Discord server. You'll have fun, um, or we'll or we'll kick you out. Depends upon what your brand of fun is. But if you're because if you're a toxic <laughs> asshole, we're gonna kick you out. But if you're looking for an escape from the toxic assholes, come on in! Discord.thesloopcast.com <laughs> All right. Um, tonight's ending music. Got, got no love from the chat. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by... Um, you know what uh, band I like? Who's at least partially out of Columbus? Um, they're called Glasslands. Uh, you can check them out. Uh, they just released a new album. I'll play a song off the new album, probably one of the new singles. I don't know which ones yet. So uh, just keep an eye. Uh, uh, check the show notes. I'll tell you which song it is in the show notes. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, uh, this is Glasslands. Glasslands. <laughs>